We're going to switch gears a little bit and go to a different topic, but something we have been talking about here quite a bit on Live Now from Fox, talking about the impact of artificial intelligence on our society. How will it impact us? Well, we have an expert to talk about that. It's Tim Wenninger. He's Associate Professor of Computer Science at the University of Notre Dame. Thank you so much, Tim, for joining us today. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Absolutely. Well, let's start with this, just real general. I, I just want to go with uh, your general impressions. When you look at artificial intelligence and the multitude of ways that it's used, how do you think it'll impact society, both good and bad? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I think uh, artificial intelligence generally has the capability to be a, a huge positive boon to society. And so when you think about um, all the different ways that AI helps us currently in our day-to-day -day lives, um, on my way into work today, I drove in a car that had auto braking, it had uh, cruise control systems, it had lane keeping assist that kept me in my lane. Um, and uh, if I find an airplane, there's autopilots. Um, and so those are ways that um, AI systems are already helping us out to make life better, safer, easier. Um, but looking into the future, I, I think about things like um, advanced therapeutics. And so there are drugs and medicines being brought to market right now that were developed primarily through artificial intelligence means. And those systems are being developed and honed to make our lives easier and our lives better all the time. And I wanna see where your mind goes with this question, but could we see maybe a Terminator 2 type situation where the robots and the technology just all of a sudden takes over? Is that realistic or uh, could it be, could that really happen? Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a good question. That's one that uh, we always kind of, you know, we, we grapple with when we're developing these types of systems is uh, whenever we're making some new technology, we always think about, well, what is its, uh, its impact and possibility to be used for, for harm? Now. So the Terminator question specifically, I don't see a Terminator scenario happening for many generations. Right now, um, our the, the tools that we build are used and they're wielded by humans. Um, and there just isn't systems in place. And we just don't have, the, the way the system is set up, um, the way we think about it is just not in a way that is conducive to robots building robots for nefarious purposes and taking over uh, the world. That's that and time travel make uh, the Terminator 2 situation kind of difficult. Um, now, there is some uh, concern about um, there are bots and uh, robots, that is, and AI systems that are being used on the battlefield right now all over the world. Um, wars are increasingly fought with AI systems. There's technologies that loiter in the sky waiting for opportunities to strike, and those are done without human intervention. Um, currently, as we speak, that's that's a technology that's being used. But the Terminator situation is one where ro the robots rise up against us. There isn't the controls that are uh, necessary for that to happen right now. So I am not concerned about the Terminator situation. There's other things I am concerned about, but the robots rising up against us uh, are not those things. Well, that sets my mind at ease just a little bit. So that's good news, but let's talk about the positive stuff. And you kind of hit on this a little bit already, the ways that AI can improve our lives, maybe make our jobs easier, things of that nature. What do you think? Yeah, certainly. Um, so when I'm writing an email, I have an autocomplete system that uh, will help me complete my sentences, save me some time. Um, that autocomplete system is a an, an artificial intelligence system. When I'm texting someone, it'll help me um, correct my grammar or suggest the next words, that makes my typing, my texting even faster. Um, uh, for, for pilots and aircraft, right, uh, it makes their jobs easier so they can, can do more things in the, in the cockpit by um, having an, an autopilot uh, help them fly the airplane. And these are just things that are existing currently. I, I, I see a future where um, AI systems help doctors diagnose better, help uh, physicians uh, and, uh, and those who develop medicines, make better medicines that are targeted to specific individuals. Because one thing that AI systems are able to do is personalize um, recommendations. And so uh, as an example, we have on certain streaming services, what to watch next is an AI system that, de that determines based upon your specific characteristics and needs, here's a new TV show that I think that you might be interested in. The same thing for shopping online. Here's some products that you might be interested in. I see the same kind of thing happening in medicine is that you take these medicines and have these um, these conditions, uh, we can tailor a recommendation and a health plan just for you and a medicine plan just for you uh, to help make your life better, to keep you healthy. Um, and if, these are just the two that come to mind right now. There are, 
a myriad of ways that AI systems can help. And um, we're only just getting started with some of the positive impacts that it can have. Certainly a lot of positive things, but AI, as I understand it, I believe this is the case that it's constantly learning and developing. Um, is there a way that human beings could interact with artificial intelligence that maybe causes it to develop in a way that wouldn't be beneficial to humanity, if that makes sense? No, that's a great question. Um, so artificial intelligence, the way it works is, is you're right, that it's constantly learning and constantly be training um, on, on data that's given. And what AI systems do is uh, it, it mimics humans, right? To be artificially intelligent, intelligence is defined in human terms. And to be artificially intelligent means to act like a human uh, and to mimic human behavior uh, as, as in the best way possible. And so we can train it to act like humans. Um, and if we teach it to do different things and we um, it, it learns from people who are doing maybe bad things, then it will do the bad thing. Um, it'll mimic the, the person doing the bad thing. And one thing that uh, I'm particularly concerned about in this space is artificial intelligence agents, uh, these systems that have been developed that act like not just one bad person or nefarious uh, you know, uh, person, but a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand bad people that are all um, trying their best to do something negative. And that's the one kind of harm that AI systems uh, have in particular is that they're really good and really efficient at doing at mimicking human behavior. And um, that's where we can get into trouble is if we don't think carefully about um, all the different ways that making um, kind of artificial humans that mimic human behavior, all the different ways that that can go wrong. So, and, and that and um, training uh, this, the, these systems requires lots and lots of data. And the data that we get a lot of times is from human behavior. And a lot of times that has questions about privacy. And so maybe you don't want your son or daughter's um, data to be used for training these systems. Maybe a painter doesn't want their, their painting or their photo to be used to train a photo generation system. Um, and as the owner of that painting or as the parent of some child, um, you have the right, in my opinion, to make that decision. And um, that's where we need to start thinking carefully about the data that's used to train these systems. And right now, it's kind of a wild west. We don't really have any good guardrails and controls over what goes into training these systems. And that does make me think of another question. What do you make of like, I, I think it's a, there was a gentleman from Alphabet who was developing some AI technology that kind of abandoned the project, right? And then warned people that this could be bad. I just, I wanna know what you make of that. What do you think of those situations that the people that are developing this, at least in some cases are saying, this could be dangerous. Yeah, and there's um, there's been a lot of calls calls for pause in these uh, AI systems and development of these, and to think carefully about it. And that's that's the role of um, these companies to play, and also the role of academics like myself and others to to carefully evaluate the impacts of these possible uh, of these systems for possible negative or harmful impacts. Um, I believe you're referring uh, in, in the the case of Alphabet. It was this a, a particular de um, developer that said that this algorithm is sentient and it's, it's alive. And that that is a hundred years from possible. Uh, that is, that's not a thing that uh, we, now it's good at mimicking humans, but um, that uh, alphabet in a particular case said, hold, hold on, that's not right yet. And that's why that person was, I don't know if it was reassigned or, or, or somehow not involved in that project anymore. So I think people are getting a little bit ahead of their skis and um, and what's capable right now, it's certainly going to be useful and helpful, but it's not it's not sentient. It's not artificial life, and it won't be for a long, long time. And hopefully, it doesn't develop to the point where it becomes news anchors and ends up taking my job. But I think okay for now. Uh, well, Tim, that's pretty much all the questions I had for you today, though. But of course, I want to turn it over to you and ask: Is there anything you want to add on this topic that maybe I didn't ask you about today? Yeah, on this stuff, one additional thing that I, I think is is important, maybe for your for your listeners and watchers, is uh, this aspect of of what are we all going to do? Let's say AI systems come and they're really good at mimicking humans, and they take our news anchor jobs. Now, I might talk to you later about that because that's something that uh, is is coming. Um, but I think that those fears are a little bit overblown. In my opinion, um, humans are really good at selling their labor. And so the uh, the fear of, of everyone losing their jobs, I think is overblown. Um, we will find other things to do, other ways to fill our time and to sell our labor uh, on the market. So 
I do want to just kind of dispel any fears that we might have about um, the, the job market. Now, our jobs will change for sure, but I think we'll still all be happily, well, maybe not happily, but employed uh, into the future. So with AI, keeping a glass half full kind of perspective is the way to go at this point, and we'll see how it all develops. Tim Wenninger, professor of computer science at the University of Notre Dame, joining us this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. You take care. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.